Product developers tended to sit together and they had their own reporting relationship into product development, so they had a leader. Designers, the same thing, they sat together, reported in a different part of the organization, and PLMs reported in somewhere else. And so when you had a, a product you had to work on, and you see in that triangle, it says product is king. We talked about virtual teams, bringing three people together virtually, and even physically in some sense, to work on a product. So those guys had to work, in, work together to push a product through the entire process at Nike. Um, and and this, this works at other companies as well. I'm going to keep saying Nike because I work for Nike, but this is gen generic enough that it's pretty uh, representative of all companies. Like somebody's got to be in charge, right? You can't have three roles like that with nobody in charge, right? Who's in charge? Well, that, that's actually why we have product is king in the middle. Everybody's got to be focused on the consumer and, and product. That's, that's what it is. But uh, everybody's equal. There is no leader. And I thought that was total chaos. Like how could you have a team of three people? But um, the reality of the situation is that the product process is long enough that as you go through the product process, leadership kind of moves. Like when you're the very beginning, the product line manager is kind of driving the decisions about what you've got to have in the product line, cost, what the consumer wants, that, that kind of thing. Once you have that kind of framed up, then the, the designer kind of takes point. And they're designing the shoes and stuff. And then once the designer gets to the point where they're kind of done, then the developer takes over and starts getting prototypes and getting the stuff sourced over in Asia or wherever you're going to source the product. So the reality is, is, is as you go through the process, different people take on the leadership role and the others defer to that person. And uh, the other thing I've noticed like in the dynamics is a lot of times you'll have one person that's been around for a long time or has a lot of credibility uh, and that person will, will tend to stand up. You might have a product designer who's brand new to the company doesn't even really know where the bathroom is yet. And you have a PLM who's been around for 30 years or whatever, 20 years. The P, that, that person will, they will defer uh, to that person in, in order to get leadership and direction as, as a team. And the other thing leadership has to do, management has to do, is watch these teams, because a lot of these teams that are working in any given time, some are very high performing, and you can challenge them with some of the most challenging products for the company. And other teams are, uh, are dysfunctional, right? And so sometimes you have to have an intervention. Maybe break them up, move them around, bring in new people, whatever. So it's, it's management's role to make sure that these teams are healthy and delivering against what they have to do. This is my, I'm a process-oriented guy. And you'll, you'll see this uh, at the top. This, this is how product goes through the company from start to finish. And uh, you know, some people will draw this as a circle, you know, where you have the consumer at the top. You go through this whole product creation process and you deliver product to the consumer. So it starts and ends with the, with the consumer. I'm more time-driven. You know, that represents time. And I'll show you another slide here in a second that shows some complexity. But at the top, you see it starts with innovation. And innovation can take uh, years before it's ready to go into, the, into a product. But once it's ready, it goes into this 18-month process that you can see. Uh, PLMs, the planning people, start by defining the line. What are the new products? What price points should we have? What are the consumers looking for? What are our competitors doing? You know, those kinds of things. That's what the PLMs are doing. Designers taking those, those ideas and creating a product. Product development, prototype them, samples them, test them, and all that. Then they hand off to two groups, the one at the top where it says sell. That's our sales force that's going out to our big retail accounts and selling the product, um, like Foot Locker, Dix, all that kind of stuff. Concurrent to that is uh, the factories are commercializing product. Usually you sample in sample size, one size, but they have to scale out to all sizes, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, you know, all those sizes get them ready for production, and then you go into the supply chain part where you order product, it gets manufactured, shipped around the world, uh, distribution, and then the red box at the top is that uh, you have to finalize all your marketing stuff just before you launch the product. Make sure you know which athletes are wearing which products, you know what the product story is, you have your advertising ready to go. And then when you get beyond that 18 months where it says retail and internet sales, that's where all the stuff comes to bear at one point in time. All the marketing, all the athletes, all the product comes to, to one point in time so you can start to execute. And there, there's other processes that are a lot shorter, but the, the bulk of the stuff goes through that 18-month process, and then we spin off from that. 